Did you know the man who pulled the trigger? Were you also told it was a stray bullet, just accidental, not intended? On February 5th, 1981, Rebo Chief Yoel Kagutam 7 then convened a strategy meeting in Machinde, and key on the agenda that night was how to acquire military supplies. It had earlier been planned to be a peaceful attack, riding on the ignorance of the government forces at Kabamba, but a stray bullet by Eli Tumwine prompted a change in strategy, and it was the launch of a war that would see the current government. I tried to find how to keep the guards uh, occupied, uh, but they, 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 they realized that it was uh, it, it, something unusual had happened. And I told them, uh, first I was telling them, we have brought you food. Meanwhile, all the people who were behind the truck, the whole force was getting off. Uh, and, uh, and in the event, that's when uh, fire started. When we came, we tried to attack the Amra to enter, and we, we couldn't succeed. We tried three times, actually. We reorganized. First attempt, second attempt, third attempt. Then we failed. We couldn't get there, we couldn't enter the Amra, but we made together about more than 40 guns. The gorilla attacks characterized the next two years with surprise attacks. More weapons were acquired and recruitment was above average. Police stations were attacked, police trucks were laid and captured, and on rare occasions, barracks. The atmosphere of five years was a mixture of fear and hope. For any attack, you know, it's nice to talk about it. But for sure, when you go in a war situation, once you go for a battle, there is a permanent danger of death. Majority didn't know when, whether we were going to defeat the government. People were desperately and anxious going to, when are we capturing power? The late Fred Rijema, then was overall commander of the different groups. The young and elderly coordinated it well, and the rebel groups never ran out of supplies again. Political work helped us to get recruits and supplies. We identified our cause. We identified the political line. They appreciated and they joined us. So they became politically aware. Rigging of elections at that time really triggered the process, but the problems were inherent, the problems were many at that time. Several attempts have been made on the National Army, but with no success. The failure has been blamed on the new technology that makes access to top secrets possible through intelligence agents and the lack of mass support. In Uganda, since 1986, we have confronted and defeated about 21 Gorilla warfare. It's not easy now because the population still supports the government. It is not easy now because the government is pro people, the army is pro people. It is not easy now because of the modern communication. The liberation process gave birth to a doctrine and ideology that is still shared by most of the NRA members, now in reserve forces and others retired. Although some people have left us, others have died, but at least the doctrine that we shaped from that time still continues to be inculcated in the minds of the, of the, of the young troops. The National Resistance Army insurgents was based largely on the anti-Obote strongholds of Central and Western Uganda and the former kingdoms of Ankole and Bunyoro. Fighting was particularly intense in the Royal Triangle of Uganda, where the bitter memories of the two liberation bush wars have proved an enduring legacy. In comparison, the inability of the Uganda National Liberation Front government, led by Obote to defeat the labels, both in the West and West Nile, proved devastating to the unity of the government, well, the brutality of the counter-insurgents further inflamed anti-Obote sentiments in the occupied areas. Dear Jean, NBS Television.